The two thieves bowed low to the cat pharaoh, jumped into their little felucca and set sail. Be warned, the cat pharaoh told them as they departed, do not take anything else while you're in Karnak, and know that the jewel fish is magical. Be sure it does not get wet. For many days, Jackal and Ibis journeyed up the Nile. Finally, the mighty temple of Karnak came into view. Beside it lay the palace of the crocodile prince. Jackal and Ibis hid their felucca carefully amongst the reeds and slipped inside. This, this project actually started years ago, decades ago. Um, I made a trip to Egypt um, with my wife uh, way before we had kids or anything, and it was so inspirational. The actual choice of characters for the Jewelfish of Karnak really came from the, the history of Egypt itself and, and all of their you know, sense of you know, gods and mythology. And the cat is very sacred in Egypt, so I made it a cat pharaoh. And two other characters that crop up a lot are a jackal and ibis. Um, so I thought, well, I'll take those two characters, but in, in, in this case, I turned them into a pair of scruffy thieves who steal something at the marketplace and get into trouble. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure that's not what the ancient Egyptians intended for those characters, but hey, artistic license. The thing is, that the more you learn about Egypt, the more fascinating it is. It's really just the cradle of so much of our, of our civilization. I mean, my story is, is, is obviously just a fantasy, it's a makeup, but I wanted to also impart just some, some small, you know, sort of nuggets of, of fact about Egypt. So on the jacket of the book, if you open it up and look at the back, there's, there's a sort of, a, a, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 little kind of boxes with, with just information, which is real, about ancient Egypt. I can't help but put puzzles into my books. I, I just love it. It's the sort of thing that I loved as a kid. So with, with Karnak, when you get to the end of the book and you see this mechanism, it will show you all sorts of possible patterns for what the jewel fish looks like. And it's not entirely evident as you look through the book exactly what the pattern of jewels on the jewel fish is. And I've done this on purpose because I want you to go back through the book and figure it out. What exactly does the jewel fish look like? And when you know that, then you can turn the dials until you get exactly that right color. And that'll give you very important information too. Because what I'm doing is I'm uh, on, on my website, grandbase.com, I'm, I'm uh, setting up a challenge. And if, if you go there and talk to the cat pharaoh, she will uh, ask you whether you've brought her the jewel fish. And if you have, and you can prove it, and you can only prove it by doing this whole process, then she'll give you a reward. I discovered in, in my research that with, with, with hieroglyphs, those fantastic, you know, like little, um, little symbols that, that the Egyptian writing consists of, that they have, most of them do actually have English language equivalents. You know, th there is a definite, you know, correlation, and some of them don't, so I had to make a few of them up. Like I think, you know, like there wasn't one for C, so I put cup, or there wasn't one for Q, so I just had, you know, a couple of birds in a row, or things like that. So some of them are real, and, and some of them are, are, are made up. But th there is a, there is a... Uh, a, a, a key in the book. Actually, on the very first page you turn to, you'll, you'll see there's this, one of these stone tablets, and there it shows you the hieroglyphs and a kind of a slightly disguised English language alphabet. So that's the key to just de decoding all of the other hieroglyphic messages uh, which are through the book. And some of them are absolute rubbish. No point reading them at all. But some of them are useful. In fact, one or two of them are very useful if you're trying to figure out the, uh, the answer to the mystery of the what the jewel fish looks like.